Hello and uh, welcome back. I'm a little bit excited because uh, I won an auction. <laughs> it was on eBay. It comes from the UK. Look at this. It's uh, the Anrichu and it's a frequency counter. I would guess it's about 20 years old, but it has 11 digits. 10 or 11. We need to see. And it also has a proper oscillator now well, otherwise it makes no sense to have so many digits so it should be working uh, we're going to switch it on and and i will put uh, the 10 megahertz in the front to see uh, what this uh, internal oscillator does it does look still very nice they have put here with marker that uh, it's a pity but we try to clean it does have a nice stand on the bottom as you can see but you don't necessarily need to use it and you can just fold it back uh, on the top we see a lot of stickers and i like to, to see that it always has been at enritsu so that is nice a sticker of 2002 here a sticker of 2001 and that already said retested so it's probably from before 2000 um, the calibration was until 2015 so it's not too far off only five years <laughs> and uh, in the back some original stickers the seal doesn't seem to be broken uh, so that's a good thing let's switch it on there is a ma main power button in the back that is really really power off and in the front it's only uh, uh, standby um, it doesn't look that it's consuming power if I look uh, one eye with my uh, <laughs> amp meter so the standby is really low and uh, if we switch it on it seems to go to some internal test and uh, it's nice you can cycle through it says 10 because it's reference to itself so of course it will be 10 it will vary uh, you will have some variations because the oscillator is still heating up so it's not stabilized yet so even it's testing with itself uh, <laughs> during the count period it is already changing so you will see uh, the frequency change we can do uh, 20 seconds well it will take a while i will get already my 10 megahertz ready i will just use one well as you see <laughs> lot lot lots of digits so let's see if we put the frequency in the front let's say we want the a input oh ah, here you have the level uh, it is the level says full so we can put the attenuator okay I, you can look here for the trigger it's kind of cool i have no clue how it uh, well i have sort of a clue how it works but i do not have a manual uh, so i was not able to read anything about it most of the buttons uh, kind of speak uh, for themselves uh, so if you have a manual please leave it uh, in the comment section if you would uh, you can help me and you can help others uh, to, uh, to find this manual and if you have a service manual that would be super super great yeah. uh, as you can see the this is uh, my laboratory reference this is 10 megahertz spot on uh, as you can see the internal oscillator is still uh, stabilizing so uh, yeah just like the voltage meters I, uh, I explain leave it switched on for a while before you use it and in a voltage meter it seems uh, less important but it is in, even uh, with the handhelds well with frequency counters or spectrum analyzers everything that have, uh, has a little uh, crystal oven it needs to stabilize so give it some time and uh, that's what i'm going to do so it has been on now for uh, 15 minutes and as you can see it's stabilized it's just stuck at uh, 125 
which seems a lot but it's actually not because here we have the megahertz the kilohertz that means here we have a hertz so it's 1.24 hertz off which is nothing and i like what i did if you there is here a least least significant digit button and uh, that adds an extra digit to the end and uh, when you don't use it they just take the middle one out and in the beginning i thought oh, that looks a bit weird why why is one digit missing but actually it reads very quick because you can see okay here i have the dot three zeros that means i'm here in the hertzers and uh, so it's it's just an easy read i like that um, if you want to extra digit you can add one and here it is and then you really need to count the zeros but you can see that the uh, one two four is actually the it was a rounding and uh, but you are already in the hertz so it, it, it doesn't matter too much and i like to see now what it does in the 20 seconds but i will show you later so now we were able to add another zero and then we are really in the microhertz already the milli sorry milli hertz uh, because here we have one hertz and then it's 0 0.2337 3, and that is really really low you can see it's an overload because i already missing the first one but you can imagine it's there um, so the the internal oscillator doesn't go more precise right now uh, last calibration was five years ago so that could be the case so we can try that later to do ourselves because i will break the seals of course because probably there is no warranty anymore uh, i would be surprised after 20 years so uh, but i will put the external reference and then it should be exactly 10. well look at that that is 10 <laughs> i like it well, let's open it even on the bottom the seal is not broken I unscrew the two screws in the bottom, the four legs in the back, and uh, we can s slide it open. Doesn't seem anything is stuck. So we continue. It does have a lot of stickers, some of them I like, and I will also remove some because. This is the last one that it's repaired with on Ritsu, so then this one, this one, these ones don't mean too much anymore because the last date is the last date and it's too too messy, so I will remove that. And uh, well, let's have a look inside. As I've seen before, uh, in Ritsu they really don't mind using a lot of uh, aluminium just to make it uh, proper. It is not a switch power supply. I have a proper transformer right there. That is good. Uh, yeah, although I also see some coils here. So maybe it's combined. And there is a proper oscillator. Look at this. It is huge. It is very hot. It probably tries to go above the ambient temperature. And it is from Toyocom. Well, I don't know. It's a Japanese brand. So TCO612. So, but it seems uh, like proper. Even there is a little door here. Probably you can adjust it by opening it, the door so. okay, that looks nice I was able to just <coughs> take the front off I uh, need it to take out the CPU board first but look the front just detaches and everything is with screws I, uh, I like that from Anichu they really uh, put effort in putting it well together 
and even look at this the whole input is all boxen aluminium it's all hf close and not with uh, just some crap net but all now they really put proper boxes and here it is connected with these connectors this is uh, quality I want to see if I can uh, clean the front better so that means I want to take the buttons out and uh, I will take everything out Okay, that was a bit exciting and I hope we can put it back together again, um, but it will not be a problem. Uh, we have the front now, we took out the display, I tried to keep it as a whole as, as possible, as you can see right here. And uh, yes, I think it will improve a lot because th I think this is the only way to uh, really clean it. As you can see all the buttons, easy access right now. Look at this, I was even able to get out the uh, marker markings that they made and it is like new, no stickers, nothing. Okay, we put it all back together again and uh, it almost is like new, no markings, nothing and everything is shielded again here and also you can see they put this, I don't know how, how to explain, I would say anti-static wool, if you can see here in the, even in the corners, this is like gold or copper wiring that I put in the edges, so when you when you put it back together it's really closed they uh, they know what they do look at this doesn't it look great it's almost new i'm happy i'm gonna put it into my brick wall i'm gonna use it this is it thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time